Good morning. Thank you for joining the August 14th Volta call. And today we'll be doing some sprint planning for Volta 2.0 Sprint 6. And just a reminder, we record this, so keep that in mind during any discussion and or presentation. With that, I think we will start off with the just a quick recap of where we are. So Sprint 6, we kicked that off yesterday or opened the Sprint, and it's going to run through the end of August. This is our typical three-week sprint cycle. And just for a placement of where we are on the targeted schedule, so here we are at sprint six, and so that gives us a total of six, seven, and eight, gives us three development sprints remaining before we plan to move into integration testing. And then the final sprint would be the hardening and documentation. So that's roughly where we are with uh, the plan that we'd laid out. And so we've got about three development sprints remaining. So we'll need to make sure we do prioritization efforts for the work that needs to be covered during those three sprints. Okay, with that, let me go back to the agenda. Uh, the next thing I wanted to go over quickly was the blocker issue we had from the previous sprint, 542. There's a new patch available for review for that. So I wanted to make sure we have that pointed out. So here we've got the link in Garrett, and it is over here as well. So if we could prioritize the review of that to uh, remove the blocker so that Gamza's work could proceed, that would be greatly appreciated. Any comments or discussion needed from the group on that? OK. I'm not hearing anything. So just, uh, again, please prioritize the review for the blocking issue that we have. Then we have uh, some preliminary prior, uh, kind of grooming of the backlog we did to organize the issues a little more again and pull some up towards the top to see if they could be pulled up into sprint six. So let me go over to the Volta board for a minute here. And I need to adjust my screen size here so I can see everything. There we go. OK. Um, so actually, first, let's quickly look at what we have in scope for Sprint 6 right now. So we have a number of items that carried over. We've got uh, defects that we had at the top here are all ones that carried over from the previous Sprint. And I think we have a couple that are still unassigned as well. No, this one is assigned. OK. I think there may be a couple unassigned. Uh, and then we have, continuing down the list, uh, some work for OpenOLT has been brought in as well as work for OpenOMCI. So those are, are being brought in uh, by the tech leaders for the group primarily for those topics. Um, Julie, hi. Julie, yeah. um, uh, are we going through the DFAT a little bit later? later? I I'm just want to, this uh, about the open flow, uh, when the device is disabled, the switch on the, on the ONO is still show active. And I see the comment. So I, are we going to go okay. to individual tickets? I was not planning to, except for the new issues, unless there were specific requests. So we can jump into this if you would like. Yeah, because Jono was saying this is the correct behavior. Is that, Jono, are you on? Uh, yeah. So you did not um, Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is the behavior of Onos. Whenever a switch disappears, um, it still stays inside of Onos because it, Onos is expecting that the switch might connect back again. Um, but but if but, you but, want but, to remove it, but, uh, if yeah, you want to okay. remove it, it has to be administratively removed from Onos. Okay, but but it's still show the 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 you know sorry I should know this but you know um, does it show active or inactive state? It should show inactive. If there's no open flow connection, the device will show um, inactive. I think it's called enabled or available equals false. Yeah. Okay. So so basically, uh, I yeah. So, so I'm not sure if it's actually causing any any problem. That that's what I'm trying to figure out is is what is the issue that 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 we're seeing because of this. This is Nick. Um, I, I know about the the issue. So if you disable the OLT in Volta, it remains enabled in Onos. Correct. If you, delete, if you delete the OLT in Volta, it becomes disabled in Onos, but it is still in Onos. 
Yeah, okay. So the first one, if you disable the OLT and Volta, it's still active and honest. That's a bug in Volta, right? That that means that Volta is still no, making uh, a virtual connection the to The thing honest. is, Onos just considers logical devices. So as long as it can reach it, basically as long as it can reach Volta, and, uh, and Volta has a record of the switch, it considers that there is that the switch is connected. Once you delete it, that's when it becomes inactive because there is no record of the switch. There is no connectivity. The logical device is gone. So when Onos is reaching to a agent, or a agent cannot answer for this one. So there's yeah, no way of so, so if you when you disable the physical device, uh, when you disable the physical device, if you want that to show disabled, you know, unavailable uh, so on OS, then then Volta the needs to. Yeah. When in Volta you disable the physical device, I mean you disable the device ID, the regular device ID, the logical device is not disabled. Or at least that's not but reported. Should, but should it be? It should it be, right? I think it should, be, it, right? it, should, it should, and that's what the issue so is. So if we have three OLT, so if we have three edge cores, and they're all represented to Onus as the one. No, they represent as different entities. Are they? So yeah, three yeah, line yeah. cards are three different yeah. Yeah, different devices. So well, the first question still remains. If I disable a physical device in a Volta, does the logical device get disabled? This is probably adapter specific, like a lot of things in Volta that shouldn't be. Um, it currently isn't is, and probably should. Then, okay, let's say the logical device is disabled and the physical device is disabled. If I enable the physical device, does that automatically enable the logical device? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's no, I again, mean, that, will, that, that yeah. will likely again that will likely be adapter specific, um, and again, it shouldn't be right. There should be consistent behavior for all of all for, yep. for, for these kind of things. Yes. And so that's what I'm trying to say is, what so, is the defined behavior? Are we keeping the enabled um, between the physical OT and the logical device? Are we keeping those? All, is the expected behavior that those are always in sync? I would I would expect that they are in sync. Given that when you when you enable the physical device for the first time, that is when the logical device gets created. So I would say that if you disable the physical device, uh, the logical device gets either removed or put in a disabled state, and the open flow connection gets uh, severed. Then I then the question so, becomes: Is there really a value to having two states? I mean, you can maintain one state in. Volta, if you wanted, it would just mean that the, if the OF agent is deciding whether to to maintain its connection to Onus, it would need to check the device, the state of the underlying physical device, rather than just looking at the logical device. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what? Sorry. Actually, different adapters de behave differently. Like if you look at a pouncing, for example, if you disable a pouncing device, the logical device goes away. So Ono shouldn't say it, uh, but some other yeah, it, it, yeah. don't do that. And this is, this, is part of the, this is part of the problem that, that we're hoping will be resolved by the new court, right? Um, exactly, yeah. This, this behavior shouldn't be a data specific. It should be defined for all of Volta um, and, and yeah. you know, handled yeah. by the same code for all of Volta. Yeah. So, so are we saying uh, we should defer this after the pouncing complete or or because the, the Luca opened this, you know, uh, ticket, right? So uh, I have been cut out to work on that. Um, shall we defer this after the 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 the, the new adapter has been established? I'm well, still trying to understand exactly what exactly what the problem is here, right? Because um, like as it's written, when a logical device is deleted, and I still see the switch is active. Well, that should never happen, right? If a logical device is actually gone from Volta. And there should be no open flow connection to Onos, and Onos will, see, will still have the device in its in its store, but it will be inactive or, or unavailable. But that's a bug, right? I think that's what he's no. saying. That's the, expected the, behavior. When logical devices delay, that Onos still see the switch as active. That's what it's expected. I'm saying. I'm saying. No, no. Onos should see the switch as inactive. Yes. Right. And, and I'm pretty. Sorry, uh, finish. I was going to say that's a probably adapter specific behavior. I know in OpenOLT, when I delete the OLT, it, it shows inactive in Onos. So if it's deleted, it's surely inactive. Then there is the question if it's disabled, 
doesn't show inactive. That's another question. Maybe a separate question. Okay, so I yeah, think and, and I think and I think like like Ken says, other adapters like the simulator OT or the Pontem do have this behavior that when you disable the physical device, the logical device is shows inactive in on us, which means the logical device is actually gone from Volta. Yeah, and and to answer your question, uh, Sean, like it's uh, by moving uh, device management uh, inside the core, then we can have a uniform behavior across. All of that, all adapters. Basically, if you disable something or you delete something, we should see something consistent in all those. Okay. So I thought so, someone, I, I thought someone looked into fixing this with OpenLT, but um, they decided that um, because the the way to implement this is that when you disable the physical device, you actually have to delete the the logical device, right? That mirrors what happens at creation time. When you when you enable a physical device, that's when the logical device gets created. So when you disable it, um, the logical device should get removed. But I think I can't remember who it was, but I thought there was an issue with um, if you actually remove the logical device, then it wasn't clear how to recreate it again in the same way, right? How to how to map the ports back to the same physical ports. I thought that was the issue. Okay, so Venkata was working on that. Um, so. Uh, first of all, we probably need to work. Yeah, I, I saw you. Um, so first of all, we need to see whether you know when Luca created this one, whether he was using the 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 or you know the April time frame. So that's before the open OT time, right? So so potentially this is based on the the old edge core adapter. And um, Venkata, I think I'm, I I'll work with you offline. Um, we get this more clarification. Um, sure. let, let's hold on this one a little bit. Julie, back to you. I don't want to waste too much of your time. <laughs> okay. No, it's not wasting. I think no, it's a no, great no, no. discussion. Yeah. <laughs> need, need to have the discussion. I think maybe what we will do first, let's go over the new issues and then we'll take the remaining time to talk about this because people can, uh, assign items to sell from the backlog as well and pull items in. So let's jump down to the new issues and that'll start with 1039. And so this one is actually already complete. I believe Broadcom OpenOMCI disabled enable and restart. So that work was done. Uh, the next one is 1140. And this is one chip opened related to the uh, KPI format. And this is scheduled for sprint six. And so, uh, Chip, I don't know if you want to make a couple quick comments here. Um, no, it's, it's just, uh, I guess the, the one thing I'll probably be changing that might affect existing adapters is that I'll probably uh, fix the typo in the name gauge. So that might change things. But I'm working with uh, uh, Mateo and all to get this new format done. I think we've got all the feedback already. All right. And then the next item is 1141. And this one is done as well. Open OLT, ONU activation fail alarm. So this one is complete. And then the next new one that we have is 1142. And this is disable of KPI group associated with interval P PM managed entities should disable PM. And so this one, I think, Good to see. We don't have a sprint assigned yet. So, is this probably going to be a following sprint? Uh, yeah, it would probably be several sprints from now. Because um, right now, when the uh, uh, PM metric interval uh, is collected, uh, it'll always collect, but it'll notice that it's disabled, so it won't be published. So, this is just an optimization to make sure that the OpenOMCI doesn't do extra work. Okay. Okay. And then the next item is 1143, and this is support pulled ONU KPI item. And this one is targeted for sprint six. And this one, Chip, I did have a question for you. So I know we've had presenta oops, presentations on uh, the, the KPIs for 2.0 and items identified as, as must have and so forth. Is there any additional info you need from the group on prioritization of the various 
KPI? No, I, I think I've pretty much got most of those. And, okay. and this is just sort of covering those ones that don't fall into integral groups like the okay. laser bias current and all. Okay. All right, thank you. And then next one, 1144. Alarm upload frame and count issues. This one is already done. And that was, uh, let's go on to the next one, 1145. And this one is a new defect, new flow change computation data, overriding old flow computation data during incremental flow update calculation. This one was done by Girish. Uh, so I, any questions before we move on? Okay, so this one was completed yesterday. And next item is 1146, open OLT ONU discovery alarm and indication to Pasca. And this one is complete as well. And the next one, 1147, is an ad trans specific one. So I think two of those will skip over them if you don't mind, Chip. And then 1149, this is related to an issue that was brought up over some email discussion uh, from a group. And I think the status for this one would be monitoring right now. So there was a suspected memory leak. And then uh, Ken took a look at this and asked them to 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 uh, install it without dash D, I think I remember right. And, yeah, dash and D. Then, so I think right now we're just waiting to see if the issue reappears in a few days. And so it's probably just a monitor status right now. Any other thoughts, Ken or anyone else? No, it's just monitoring status. Okay. It's uh, pretty much the cluster. They were doing absolutely nothing on the cluster. We just start it okay. and then uh, wait. Right. Yeah, no, just just quickly, I was just wondering, what is Dash D? What does it do? Uh, it, it's used really for alarms and for PMs. And uh, it's, it's pretty much like, uh, uh, take uh, the data, like, I've got to remember all the details about it, but pretty much it's, it's it takes the data and publish it into the, uh, for like uh, Grafana and, uh, and OpenNMS when we're using it. So it's a in-between container. It's not like really part of core of Volta. Okay, thanks. Should that be removed and that in other integration be changed to use the Kafka bus? Uh, no, it's, this is not part of the Kafka bus. This information is still going to the Kafka bus, but Dash is kind of uh, help us take data from uh, Kafka and move it to the other uh, components like Grafana and uh, OpenNMS are using. So this this needs to be revised for sure because Dash D had some issues before in terms of- Yeah, knowledge. I guess I'm wondering if there's a specific code in the core to deal with um, Grafana or uh, OpenNMS, then I would think uh, we want to remove that. Yeah, it's 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 not really part of the core per se. It's it's all the uh, the deployment files that we have. Those are the one that is making reference to to Dash D and Grafana and all those different things. So if it's uh, if we want to to have Volta just the, the core components, then yes, we had to remove it from those deployment files. Okay. Other discussion? Okay, and then the next item, 1150, simplify open OLT driver to single threaded. And that one is in progress from Shad right now. And then 1151, create common gRPC server component. This one is complete. Uh, next new item is 1152, remove flows when port is disabled. And this one was created yesterday. When logical port goes down, remove associated subscriber flows, and that will force re-authentication to recreate flows. So this one, uh, Nick is assigned to you and in sprint six. Next is 1153. And this one is decompo decompose flows use old device ID after a ONU delete. Example here, 
ONU with device ID A is deleted and it's reactivated, comes up with device ID B. And so the flows are not pushed. So this one, we do not have it scoped in or we don't have it assigned yet at this point. Go ahead. I think this one we want in 2.0. And is this one that anyone can work on in Sprint 6? And Julie, shouldn't this be, you know, if when you delete it and then reactivate it and then come back at device B and the subscriber are not pushed because it was. Because it tries to push to the old device ID. So basically, it's the, it's the decompose has, the, the, the database yeah. is not clean up? In the decompose, they create a graph. And I think the graph, when, when a new one new comes up, it's added to the graph. And when it's removed, it's not removed from the graph. So I suspect both device A and B are in the graph, but A, because it was added before, is the one that's getting the flow. Some something like this, like a timing or. Uh, okay. Or maybe it, the, and the decomposes the decomposition file that right now currently is in the core, right? So. Um, oh, that's yes. That's it's in the core, right? The yeah, composer. So yeah. is that? Is that, I, 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 yeah, doubt can. This is, uh, I doubt this is a graph issue because the graph gets recalculated every single time. It could be that the point, the one new point was not deleted properly from the logical device. Maybe that uh, that would uh, that would cause that issue. Uh, that needs to be looked needs to be looked at for sure. Uh, Julie, let's put it in Sprint Six, okay. and then I will move the priority higher. Actually. Uh, Nick, do you agree? Yes. Okay. Turn it to a high priority? Yep. Yes. And then let me put it in sprint six here, and then we'll need to get that looked at. Okay. Okay. Uh, other discussion on this one before we move on? Uh, everybody agree the, the, the reassessment of this? If any objection, let me know. Yes, um, uh, this is Amit. So uh, we haven't seen this problem with the H core adapter. So uh, I'm not sure if there is a problem in the core. When you say H core adapter is the open, uh, is the the older ASF? Uh, uh, yeah, the ASF okay. L16. Yeah, the older adapter. Okay. So yes. Uh, Amit, can you? Can, sorry, can you post the comment on this one? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Okay, thanks, Amit. Okay, uh, other discussion before we move on? And let me see, I think Kate is on. Uh, yes. Yes, you are on, okay. So we have a new issue from you as well, 1154, and this is for BBSIM, 802.1x authentication, emulation, and BBSIM. And this one is assigned to Sprint 6. I had a question, I'm not sure when I was looking at before the call, if 1155 is a duplicate? Oh, uh, this is my mistake. Uh, I, I'm glad if you remove one of them. Okay, I think the other one, this one has the the reference to SIBA in it. So I think I'll just close this one after the call as a duplicate. Okay, I just wanted to check before I did that. Thank you, Kikasa. And then the last new item is 1156, refactor OpenLT driver to allow sharing with backends for multiple hardware and simulators. And this one is in Sprint 6 and being worked by Shad. So that's, let me just refresh, make sure nothing else came in. That, oh, we do have a couple more. <laughs> Good thing I refreshed. Okay, 1157. And this one is create a gRPC server to handle northbound API requests. And this one is, uh, let's see, I'm, oh, it's a subtask, so I can't assign it separately, I think. Okay. And then 1158 is create the Volta gRPC service handler. And so another subtask in progress from Ken. Uh, anything, Ken, you want to add for those new items to discussion before we move on? 
No, no, those are pretty much the steps that I'm working on currently. Okay. So then uh, for the. I have one question here. So, where is the code for Volta 2.0 getting pushed? Uh, can we see it? Oh yeah, it's uh, it's uh, under Volta dash go. It's uh, another project and uh, uh, Gerrit. Uh, just like Volta, this one is Volta dash go. Okay, thank you. I'll look into it. Um, 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 so um, maybe maybe on the wiki we should put a link there. Um, so so um, <laughs> can can you send me the link and I'll put it on the wiki. Okay, sure. Thanks. All right, other comments before we move on? Okay, so we've done the review of the new issues. I think now we'll go back and look at some of the backlog to see if there are items that could be pulled in or should be pulled in for Sprint 6 based on the review from the group. And just a, a caveat at the start here, we are already pretty overloaded, I think, with the story points assigned in six with the ones that carried over from Sprint 5. So it, it will be challenging to bring things in. Other things may have to get reassessed for priority. We'll see. So right now we've got uh, 174 story points in, and that is significantly more than we normally close out during a release cycle, or sorry, during a sprint cycle. So we'll keep that in mind, but I do want to take a look at what we've got in the backlog and see if there are items that need to be pulled in in this next sprint, ones that would be wanted for um, you know, near term. So let me go down. And maybe, you know, in like in California, some of the school already started. So now the parents, no more vacation. <laughs> so everybody got to work. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think uh, some of these items, so we, we kind of pulled up most of the defects to the top so that folks can look at those. And then the majority of the issues, um, the feature functionality items are below that. So you see uh, we have got our, whoop, oh, and it redid my screen. Okay, sorry, I forgot it does that when I click on something. Scroll back down. Uh, let me see if I can find it again here. Okay, where am I? Here we go. There we go. Okay, so uh, this is the highest priority. Oh, no, we've got a group of them. It looks like I've got one out of order here. So we've got Boltacore does not support more than one NNI interface. Uh, and then below that, we've got the mechanism to back up immutable cluster configuration is required. So this we had flagged to be reviewed for Kubernetes. And I think the thought was we were going to continue to use this JIRA and update it. But if it's cleaner to close it out and start a new one, um, Ken or Sergio, I'm not sure if you have any views on what would be cleaner at this point. If you think it'd be better to just replace it, you know, that's fine with Go ahead and close this one out. Once a new one. Yeah, maybe we should uh, we should have a new one. Okay. This has been around forever. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So let's just clean slate. Okay. So we could do that afterwards. And Ken, I'll probably recruit your help there. And then next we have a few of the functionality items that were um, brought up to the top here that, hmm, I had something closed down that should now pop up on my screen, so apologies. Okay, the, we have a few items from DT requirements that were categorized as high priority and wanted to see if we have uh, folks who could work on these in Sprint 6. And so, the, or if we at least need to, if we have a view that these should be targeted for Sprint 6, that would be a start. Um, so the first one is configure, support configuring the ONU to not add and remove CVLAN tag. And I'm gonna pause sharing for one moment here. I'm not sure 
usually just works cleanly on my screen. Um, hopefully you're not seeing any changes now. I'm gonna exit out of the program. Okay, I had it closed, it shouldn't have popped up. So my apologies to everyone. And let me start sharing again. Okay. All right, so back to this one. So this is configuring the ONU to not add and remove CVLAN tags. So this was from a, a DT requirement support. So a views from the group on Sprint 6, and then also if we have anyone who has cycles to work on this. Any comments? All right, let me take the, well, let's see. <laughs> uh, so Sean, um, I'm going to look at, the, I think some of the tickets look very similar. I think there may be some of the du uh, duplication. Have, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and I know there's definitely more than just DT want the requirement. I'm sure the, I think the other service provider may, may especially multiple uni per ONU. Um, so I'll go out and solicit the help. Okay. And then the, the question also I have is time frame. I don't know if there's a time frame from DT. Uh, I'll, Bjorn, I'll I find think it out. on the bridge. So maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, John Bjorn is on the bridge. <clears throat> yes, I'm here. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. <clears throat> yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, uh, according to the time frame, so so we, we we don't have a concrete time frame on that. So what what was our intention uh, is to have it in the in the water 2.0. So because uh, okay. as far as I remember, it was already a requirement for for previous versions, but due to some other reasons, whatever, uh, it was not possible to to have it in the older version. So that's not a, we are not in trouble because of that, but okay. uh, we would like to readdress it and to have it in the water to go. Okay, so, so I think with that, thank you, that, that gives me some guidance here. So I think we don't need to try to pull this one into Sprint 6 unless we have someone who is free to work on it. We can look at perhaps Sprint 7 yeah. or probably at the latest Sprint 8. So let me tentatively put this for Sprint 7. Thank you. Okay. And then the second item was reporting of ONU registration IDs from Volta. And time frame for this is the same, 2.0? Yeah, yeah, it's for all the three, the four, three the same, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah, and I, I believe Mike at the foundry might have added an ONU active alarm that has a serial ONU serial number in it. Oh, and but it doesn't have a registration ID. So yeah, they need a registration registration ID. Uh. Okay, so let me try tentatively put this for Sprint Seven as well. And if we find someone available to work on it in Sprint Six then we can always pull it in. Does that work? Yeah, that's fine for me. Okay. And then since it is high priority, that should be a key focus then um, bringing it into, um, did I miss one? I must have skipped over one. Ah, here's the one I missed. Sorry, I jumped right over the first one on the list. So this was supporting multiple unis per ONU. Yeah. yeah, same for that. Thank you. So Bjorn, I think it's the, the, the registration ID is the highest one. I mean, among the three, right? The registration ID need to be implemented first. If we want to make different rankings on these three, then yes, you are right. The registration ID is the highest one, yes. Right. Okay. <coughs> That's it. Okay. That's it. Thank you. 
All right, then I think a couple of the other items on here. This one, I believe there's some overlap with other stories. We're going to try and do some cleanup. So <coughs> this first batch, at least, we've got a new JIRA's open on a per item basis. So one for LOS, one for loss of acknowledgement, and so forth. So I think this one will get closed out as a duplicate once we confirm that all of these are covered, and then we'll work the individual tickets. Uh, there are a few I wanted to specifically go over. So Sean and I, when we were looking through the backlog, I think we had a couple here. We were wondering if they could be pulled into Sprint 6. Um, so we'd look at that with the group and get views on that. So the first one was 1090. And so this is operational status, ONT Uniport. And so this is your Ethernet status and then the link up or down for that. We thought that might be good to bring in to one of the earlier sprints for some troubleshooting purposes. Any thoughts from the group? And pardon for my ignorance here. Um, is it part of the, the Uniport status is part of OMCI message? Um, yeah, for yeah, the I think the Uniport can be that's something you would have to query. It's it's in an ME, and then link status is an alarm, and it also is pullable. Can that be set? What uh, I'm saying, you, you know, uh, you know, for example, they'll have duplex for duplex. If we want to set it to, you know, auto, you know, auto, auto negotiation or something like that, can that be set through uh, through OMCI? I I believe it is. I think there's an there's a couple of them. I have to look at what they're how they're labeled because um, there's like an expected value, then the provision value. It, it's a bit confusing, but I'll look at it. Okay. So this, potentially this, this, this is part of this this particular user story was only about retrieving the current state. So yeah. it was not about it was not about configuring those things, but it was about yeah, retrieving that, the current state. And that, that, that looks like it would probably fall within the story I'm working on for, for pullable parameters. That's that's what I was thinking as well. Okay. So I think yeah. we're lined up there. So we may at one point be able to link this one to your story as well. Okay. So, uh, so the, the, the alarm is was, already the the alarm already works, right? Uh, yeah, the alarm already works. This, 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 yeah, this one is not for an alarm, but just just the yeah. give me the immediate status. Sure. Okay. So, Chip, it sounds like this is likely covered with the work that you're, and I think you put that story in Sprint Six. Is that right? No, that's correct. So should I, I think with that, I can probably move this one in since we believe it's going to be covered by that work. That makes sense? Yeah, that, that, that probably makes sense. Okay. And I'm sure we'll probably have some debates on how best to report it on the Kafka bus, but. Yeah, okay. Fetching these are pretty simple. Okay. And then the next one we wanted to talk about was the operational status pawn. So this is again, retrieving parameters. Um, some of these I think are OMCI, some I think are not. So we might not be able to map this as cleanly in. So uh, BER counts for the, being able to retrieve those. This also has a reset uh, for those counters. Um, and then whether or not the ONU, uh, ONT is ranged and whether or not it's disabled manually or automatically. So when, when we were trying to look at some of the stories to see what might be a target for Sprint 6, we thought from some of those constant big stories, this might be one to try and bubble up towards the top. Any thoughts for the group? And we were kind of looking at some troubleshooting and reasons for this. Is this one um, like a, there's a, there's a per ONT, BIP error count and FEC 
error counts that you know you, you get it you get one end of it from the OLT and another, the other end from the ONU is is that what this is or is this is something different Mike I'm sorry can you repeat it so so there's there's a um there's a bit error count and there's a uh, there's also a fec error count when fecs enabled um mm. what one end of it's retrieved from the OLT side the you know, on the receive side and the other the other end of it can be retrieved from the ONU right these are per ONU counters is that what this this is or is this something i think i think i think um I think the upstream would be the counter that would be retrieved at the pawn side, and the downstream would be the counter that's retrieved at the O and T side. Is that? Is that I, 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 I I remember, I, yeah, it's yeah. a little fuzzy, but the, 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 there was um, the counter in the standards. I think that's like a BIP error count, and also um, the there's also a FEC error count when FEC's enabled. Is that is this like an amalgam of those two or? This is something else. Um, I, I mean, I would I would not try to I would not try to mangle those two together. Um, I mean, if there's if there's an extra count that can be provided, um, extra extra is good. It goes beyond the request, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't try to mangle uh, bit air and fec together. <laughs> yeah, for the um, like the the ONU. Uh, reported item. I think some of those are reported in some of the interval PM statistics. But in general, you know, I'm, shouldn't we have like the uh, Volta be responsible for reporting it? And if you need a reset capability, should should that be something that's done at a higher level? Because otherwise, depending on how an ONU or OLT works, you might have to maintain state of what the a value to subtract off on a reset is. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think the the OLT should be collecting these two together, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's like a it, it's, it'd be an ONU level set of counters, right? I mean, th this is this is this is again for the operational status one. It's just an immediate. What's the current what's the current value? Not not necessarily what's the current PM demand or what's the I mean this one particularly is just you know what's the current value today right now? Okay, so, so this is just the the running counter of uh, it, right. Okay, all right. And anyway, when I was saying uh, I wasn't saying bit actually I was saying bip bip the bit and sleep parity. Oh bip. Yeah. Oh, um, so, so when the so on the, there's the errors on the the frame of, of the of the um, you know the the, the pawn uh, framing itself. So so there's bip and then the spec, right? Um, now I was wondering is is this something else? Or? Um, I can investigate a little bit. Um, I, I assume that there was just a running. Um, I mean, uh, there's there's not a parameter just specifically for bid errors. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe there's a bit there's a bit error um, calculation that can be done per ONU, but that's based off of the bit, uh, the bit and leap parity and the uh, fec errors. I think. I mean, uh, it's, it's been a while. I'll have to go look at that. I guess. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I think I think some of it, if you turn FEC on, you don't get the bit errors or something in some of the counters, so it could be even stranger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so we'll follow up on that later. So not sure at this, so I think we'll we'll probably have to circle back to that. We won't try and bring it in at this moment, I think. We've got about 15 minutes left uh, in the pot. Uh, we've got, well, I'll leave that pane open. Um, let's see. I think, Sean, I think what I'll do is go down to the bottom here. So we have some of the 
Yeah, these are some of the newer ones up here we, we discussed earlier during the call. There are a few items that we moved to Volta Future from 2.0 to Volta Future. Wanted to get a, a view from the group if that's acceptable. Uh, so the first one was the open OLT throttle LOS status indication. And so this one is, uh, we, we put this as future right now because it's related to a Broadcom CSP that would need to be resolved. So weren't sure if we should target 2.0 for that at this point. Any feedback from the group or from the open OLT? Sounds good. Okay. And then while we're on open OLT, we'll look at the next one. And this one was enable all discovered NNI port. And so I think since we don't have the multiple NNI capability added yet, we put this one down to future for now. It could always be brought back up when the other functionality is delivered. Any thoughts? One thing I don't, you know, enable all the discovery <coughs> port doesn't mean, you know, all the internet port will count, as, it will be enabled when the system turn up. Um, yeah, I think so. I think right now they only enable one of the ports. Right, okay. Because the because they core, if there's an error, if you if you transcend it on the one internet port. Okay. Are they all in a, in a single lag group or they're all just running independently? I think just the independent. But, well, no, I think what's supposed to happen is that um, there are two sets of two and um, there's two lag groups. Could we move this one back into 2.0? Um, um, uh, well, I think I think like you said, the, the coding status support multiple in and I ports before yeah. we can do this. So, yeah, so I think, I think we'll leave fine. it. We'll leave it for future for now. Then, okay. And then 754. This one was add CLI to set delete show Onos IP address and port. And this one was listed as a more as a, it would be nice to be able to set it this way. And uh, so we put that as future for right now. So any other views from the group? Okay, so I'll put those, uh, map those into the corresponding spot in the back box. Um, okay, so we've got about 10 minutes left. Let me see where we are. I don't think we had a lot more on the agenda. It's mainly seeing if we have any other prioritized items to pull into Sprint 6. I'm guessing since I'm not hearing a lot from folks that pre probably don't have many folks that have cycles to add in new topics or new issues right now to their workflow. So if you do have cycles available, I request you to go take a look at the backlog, see if there are items that you can pull in, and then feel free to assign those to yourself. Any other discussion we need to have for the backlog today? Uh, well, we were going to talk a little bit about, um, I guess, Enable, disable of the ONUs, I guess, uh, or is that is that gone at this point? And I'm trying, I'm trying to remember what there was, number that was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was, a, there was an original Jira of all 42, but I think that there's another one as well. I think you're right. And I should have probably... Okay, um, we can we can just kick off discussion without having the other one open. That's fine with me as well. Let me just cover one more thing before we do that, and that is uh, I'd like to see if we have anyone of, that would like to give demos of any of the functionality that was delivered for Sprint Five. Any incremental ads we want to do for a demo. So if so, we've got time available on our Thursday calls and we can get something scoped in for that. That would be great. So you can reach out to me or to Sean, uh, Sean Ying offline if that works. And then we can get that scheduled in. 
also uh, for a continuation of the discussion that kicked off last week on flow decomposition, we do have a targeted additional meeting set up for Wednesday. It's 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific time, so that will be tomorrow. And so hopefully we'll get a resolution on the path forward out of that discussion tomorrow. And then, John, it, let me kick it back to you now for the topic you brought up on the when you enable disable. And let me see if I can find Jira while you're talking. Oh, okay. So, so I, I, think, <laughs> I, I think there, I think there was a there was an, another um, Jira around um, enable disable of the ONU. Um, and the implementation was going to happen in the OLT side itself, right? Um, and I guess just one of the things that kind of caught my ear in the discussion was, was that the ONU was not uh, reachable once that occurred. It was basically gone in, in some way from the system. Um, in the um, G.988 standard discussing um, the uh, basically admin down of an ONU. Um, the ONU is supposedly still reachable, right? And the ONU suppresses any alarms on any of its interfaces, etc. Um, and I think we we implemented it uh, at using the ONU G um, uh, enable, disable, or ad admin state uh, attribute of the o o of the ONU ME and uh, in the edge core adapter. So I, I guess, is there another implementation? That, I guess it seems like there's another implementation that, that's in the open OLT adapter that doesn't do that. And I just wanted to bring out this now, there's two different implementations and which way do we want to go? Hey, this is Nick. Um, so I've implemented it for the Broadcom ONU and the Open OMCI about coming you with OpenOLG to have it reach to OpenOLG to deactivate the ONU and reactivate. Uh, it works, it's fully reversible, disable, re enable, or fine. Does that uh, use the uh, ONU GME or is that something that's done separately from the no, it's, ONU? It's, it's telling the OLT to uh, disable, to admin down this specific ONU and admin up when you reverse it. And, and how, how does that get implemented? I mean, do the data paths get torn down, or I mean, the, the the services, or what what goes on to stop that happening, stop the data flow? For now, uh, in the ONU adapters, it's checking for its parent. If the parent is OpenOLT, it's sending a disabled child to the OpenOLT. It's bubbling it up, doing the the. The, um, the common thing is done in the new adapter, and then the specific piece is sent to the parent adapter. So the ONU adapter now has specific code depending on who its OLT adapter is? So now, yes. Yeah, yeah that, that interface isn't very clear right now. Right now, between any OLT and the ONU, there's like a set of interfaces that are abused and poorly implemented that uh, needs to be addressed. Yeah, I would agree yeah, with that. And also, when we start talking multi-uni case, um, you know, we need to talk, talk about disabling a uni and disabling an ONU child. If you disable a uni, it's already pretty uh, I mean, if you disable the uni, I mean, similarly, if you disable the ONU, you tell the parent to disable the ONU. If you disable the uni, you tell the parent, which is the ONU, to disable the uni. That's the same thing. So with disable O and U, we're very clearly saying that we want you all the unis to go down. All unis. O and U and everything attached to it. Right, right. But what, one of the one of the side effects of the implementation you, you, you implementation you described was that I can't talk to the O and U anymore. So, so that was the question there is, is is the OMCI channel still there even though we've I, I don't the, think it is, no. So it sounds like what he's saying is G9 something spec says that still has to be available. Is that, is that correct? Is that what I heard? Yeah, G9, G.988 um, has a description of what admin state 
admin enable, admin disable, or lock unlock as they describe it um, should do. And if you look, if you look at Formal 482, it, it, there's a cut, cut and paste of the G.988 section describing that. So then I guess we get to the point. So then when we say disable ONU, what do we want it to mean? Do we want it to mean down all the unis? Do we want it to mean lock the ONU G? Or do we want it to mean tell the OLT ignore this ONU on the fiber? Thank you for the notice. I mean, yeah, what does disable mean to us? Do we want disable to be the strict definition of 988, which is don't... It's still, yeah, it's still, on, it's still on the pawn. I can still talk to the ONU. The data paths for all the, the gems and the uniports are disabled. I've stopped reporting alarms on any of the interfaces. Um, so specifically, then that means send the admin lock to all the unis, send the admin lock to the no, no, ONU G. No, no I, 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 I lock okay. the ONU G and the ONU takes care of everything else. Okay. So if it, if it works, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we, I, we did talk with um, Broadcom and, uh, and that, I mean, that's how it, how it works on the Broadcom ONU. I mean, that, that's... So I mean it's it, it's it's one of the mandatory fields in the uh, Open OMCI AT and T Open OMCI spec. Yeah. To yeah so the, but I know with the Open OMCI one, and specifically, I, I did lock all the unis. Um, I I had locking the uh, ONU G in there, but one of them it worked, and the other one it didn't. Um, so I mean we can add it in there. I guess really the question is. Is there any responsibility of Volta to tell the OLT itself to do anything, or does the OLT basically say, I'm not going to ignore the ALEC ID, this home ID that's been given out? That's still going to be in place. So basically, that line of communication is still there. Correct? So, so, um, so, so once once we tell the ONU, or in, in theory, once we tell the ONU G that to lock the ONU, then in theory, all all the functionality around the locking the ONU is is then implemented by the ONU itself, right? So are you saying so somewhere we we also need to note the state, right? So the ONU, the OLT needs to know the state of the ONU. I guess when I say OLT specifically, I mean the Edge Core Bowel API call. There is nothing that needs to be done. From Bal's point of view, to say, ignore this guy, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, the guy should still be there on the pawn. It should still be reachable to the OMCI. Is the OMCI channel still stays up? Disable in this in this case, if what I'm hearing right, disable means uni G lock subsequent, uh, you know, O and U G lock unis lock. Well, no. In theory, the, the you only need to lock the O and U G, and then all of the rest of it should be taken care of. In, in theory, yes. In practice, we'll go ahead and lock all the unis. I mean, specifically, the adapters I've seen, I've had to go in and lock the physical PPTPs because the UniG or the ONUG didn't lock it. So, so functionally, as long as the ONUG is locked and the PPTPs are locked, the 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 actual unis themselves, functionally, that's the definition of disable. That's the extent of disable. Correct. Um. Well, I mean, there are there are some other aspects to disable in terms of reporting alarm state changes and things like that, right? I mean the I mean functional changes. Functional functionally yeah. specifically, uni G admin lock, uh PPTP from one to N, admin lock, and then subsequent reporting in states get bubbled up to whomever, you know, wants to see it. Right. right. So so I I guess yeah, I mean I guess ultimately are we saying that any ONU that's going to be part of of this our release, right, our, our, our open uh, uh, OLT, it has, it has to have a certain set of behaviors, right? Or are we saying that now we have to implement workarounds for all the different ONU implementations that we oh, yeah. might find? No, I'm just saying different ONU adapters that coded yeah. against particular ONU, right? I mean, some ONUs behave one way, some ONUs behave another. Um, yeah, yeah so but that's, 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 that, can't, that yeah. can't be hidden behind the ONU adapter? That's, that's what I'm saying it is, yes. That's, I'm saying okay. put it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's not like we need a specific task to disable the ONU and then 
it can be overloaded by each individual after it's moved. The question is, does it survive a reboot? Because the lock of the uni does not. Well, it can be made to, though. That's the thing is if you lock the uni, record the admin state, the uni comes back up, it gets discovered, and then in discovery it says, oh, I locked you before. We don't proceed to yeah. building bridges or unlocking unis or whatever. We just say you're locked, you're, you're done. Correct. It's not there yet. Yeah, it's not there yet, but I'm saying it could be. But I, I guess the, the question I want to drive home for my sake and Nick's sake too is, is, is from a specification and behavior point of view, there was no need or no desire to tell the OLT itself to do anything with that particular OLT. It should be purely a function of the ONU to lock and unlock. Correct. Yes or no? That well, that that was the agreed on approach in Vol okay. for something or other, okay. whatever it was. Vol at 482. Okay. That's right. I, I think it's really just agreeing on the the approach. So here's here's my suggestion right now. We're out of time. We're a couple minutes over. So let me ask if we can try to follow up on Volta Discuss. With that, is that okay for an initial follow up uh, continuation of what's going on um, right now? And then we can also, if we need time, cover it on this Thursday's call. Sure. Fine with me. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Then we'll target some follow-up discussion for that on Thursday if it's not resolved over Volt to discuss in the next 48 hours here. And then uh, with that, I think we'd better close up the bridge as we're out of time. So thanks, everyone, for hanging on a couple additional minutes. And again, uh, a reminder, if you do have demo you would like to do, let me know. That would be great. And the prioritization of the review on the patch for the blocker item that we have. If that can be handled quickly, that would be greatly appreciated. And then I think with that, we'll go ahead and close the call. Last last opportunity for comments or questions before we drop the bridge. And Julie did tomorrow morning call, right? Yep, there's the one tomorrow morning on the flow decomposition. Uh, I have a question. What time is it? Because, I mean, here you have 8 to 9, and on the email it's 9 to 10. Did I say 9 to 10 on the email? Oh, if I did, that was not the end. Oh, oh, yes, oh. you did. You're right. You're right. I have the wrong time here, don't I? Okay. I need to move the calendar. <laughs> yeah, we had some people at a conflict. I am so sorry. Thank you for that. So we had conflicts at 8, is that correct? And so 9 to 10 was the agreed time, and I put it at the wrong time on the court calendar. So I will update this. And uh, yeah, thank you. My, uh, I messed up there. Thank you for catching And Julia, that. I'll work with you to see whether we can add it on the core calendar this time. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. So I will make that correction in this. And apologies for it to everyone. I my mistake there. Thank you for for pointing that out. Okay, but that will drop the bridge. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.